After 500 years, this chapter opens at the holy capital where people come out to cheer the leader. The leader comes out and says that there wouldn't have been any war if he was born during that time. 500 years have gone by and the world is beginning to change. As a result of this change all beings began to gain divine powers. A 500-year war known as the Epoch of Apocalypse has begun. After Ling Yunfeng had bumped into numerous opportunities and uncertainties, he has become very much powerful. He has pacified all the forces in one fell swoop, with his overwhelming strength of a supreme saint that is unmatched in the world. The world's peace has finally come and Yunfeng is sitting on his throne enjoying the precious peacefulness of the after war. He gave an instruction for no one to come to see him while he was on this the one resting but me of his disciple comes to disrupt his peace. He brings with him a secret letter from the head of the Taoist sect inscribed in a yin talisman. Yunfeng wonders for what reason the egoistical woman, who never asks for help would send the contracts with the world's clans in a secret yin contact talisman created in times of emergency. He collects the letter and tells the disciple to leave while he reads the letter secretly. Yunfeng suddenly recalls some humiliating flashbacks 15 years ago, it happened when he was practicing the Hunyuan Nine Revolution Heart Method in a secret mixed element cold pool. Just at the important juncture of crossing the door of life and death, a woman who he tags as rude suddenly barges into him. She jumps into the pool and hugs him. She was being pursued by three ninjas trying to kill her. When the ninjas saw her and the man together, they said they would kill both of them together but before they can strike him, Yunfeng kills them and takes her out of them he lays her on the ground. The turbulent energy flowing in Yunfeng veins goes berserk so he tries to hold his breath and focus, guide the energy back to its origin, regulate the energy and rectify the meridians. While he was doing this the woman was laying on the floor behind him. Few seconds into him trying to guide the energy, the woman hops on his back and starts embracing and caressing him. Yunfeng tried to pull her off because he was uncomfortable but he couldn't move because once he moves all his previous accumulation energy would be wasted. All he could do was yell at her to get away from him but instead she asks him to lend her his body for the detoxification. Before Yunfeng could give the lady a reply she went ahead and kissed him on the mouth, Yunfeng was because this had never happened to him before. Immediately she finished using him for the detoxification process she went ahead to tidy up herself, while Yunfeng remained on the floor. After she tidied up she looked back at Yunfeng before she left and said that if Yunfeng was ever in trouble in the future he should say her name Qin Fen Zhu and she will definitely repay him for the detoxification. Yunfeng asked himself that if this was one of those legendary tale affair brushing away defiling this old daddy's innocence. Back to current day Yunfeng thinks that is an embarrassing memory. Him a hero used as a tool for detoxification. Later in a battle between various sects to encircle and suppress the demonic sect, Yunfeng met Qin Fen Zhu again but she thinks that's the first time they were meeting one another. Yunfeng asked Qin Fen Zhu why he felt like she was familiar and she said shyly that it could be because she had always been blind to men. For Yunfeng what was even more annoying was that he had been treated like a complete stranger many times after that. The people who were okay with him had been fine except for her, but she did have a courage that did not lose out to any man. She also has a realization, giving one's own life for the sake of peace. Yunfeng opened the letter and Qin Fen Zhu appears saying he should come and meet her at midnight, at the mountain peak of the Taoist sect, that they needed to discuss something so he must come. Yunfeng wondered what urgent matter would require for her to use the Yin contact talisman, when all the demonic beings have been largely suppressed. Yunfeng arrived at the peak of no return and realized that the place held resemblance to the place from his humiliating memory, and he said he would be damned if you were going to pick a place like this that held such memories. Just as he was going into the temple to sit and wait for Qin Fen Zhu, she came from behind him and said he was early and Yunfeng replied that the fact that the Qin Feng Zhu, the head of the Taoist sect could use the Yin contact talisman intrigues him. She came in dressed in a white dress with beads on her foot but no footwear was on her foot. Yunfeng and Qin Fen Zhu sit down and Qin Fen Zhu uses magic to brew a tea out of nothing. The tea is called Da Hong Pao from 500 years ago she gives the tea to Yunfeng for him to drink. Yunfeng collected the tea from her but he couldn't wait much longer for him to know why he was being called so he asked what kind of trouble made her call him. She was sipping from her cup of tea when she said the reason she called him was to tell him about their son. Yunfeng wasn't concentrating on what she had just said and he nonchalantly answered her asking her if there was something wrong with their son. But as soon as he gained consciousness of what he had just said and what she said to him, he spat his tea in her face and started yelling and asking her what she had just told him and also when did they have a son together. He continued saying that he had battled a few times but he has no friendships or relationships so where's the son? He kyaught on checking for possible ways and reasons until he stopped himself on a particular thought and she agreed that it was exactly that. She said to him that it was at the time she borrowed his body for detoxification. Yunfeng says so she finally admits it. The few times they fought together she always acted like nothing happened at all between them. It made him think he was insane. 
Chin Fenzu tells him to calm down since it's not his fault but he yells at her telling her about how he helped her detox her body but she didn't even have the decency to thank him after his help. Chin Fen stood up angrily and started yelling back at him saying he should shout louder so the entirety of the Taoist sect will know what happened. Yin Feng quickly covered his mouth while looking left and right to be sure no one was listening in on their conversation. Qin Fen tells him not to be nervous since it's not his fault and he agrees saying it's her fault. She says she didn't think about who would have been responsible all this while but Yun Feng stops her mid-sentence saying he needed to calm down first, and then he would listen to her when he was calm. After a dozen jugs of tea he tells her they should get married since that was her wish. Qin Fen was shocked when she heard what he just said and she asked him what he had just said to her. To Yun Feng he thinks that the reason Qin Fen is telling him about their son is because she wants them to get married so he magically made a ring out of a small wood and pushed it to Qin Fen. She is shocked at his actions because she thinks he has misread her intentions. Yun Feng saying although they don't have any affection for one another but since they have a child together they should get married so she should choose an auspicious date for the wedding. Qin Fen politely declined the ring as she sat on the chair and said that she declines and that she has no intention of marrying him even if they had a son together. Yun Feng didn't understand the point of the discussion so her asked her why she told him they had a son together if she didn't want to get married to him. She is talking in short sentences till she stands up and starts to walk seductively to where he was seated. She then whispers something into his ears. After she went close to him and whispered something into his ears they were in an embarrassing position that made Yun Feng very uncomfortable. Yun Feng yelled out of shock of what she had just whispered to him and they both face different directions because they can't look at themselves anymore. Yun Feng coughs lightly and then he says that he would go and think about it first then he would give a definite answer in a few days and turns to leave. Just as Yun Feng was leaving the temple where they had been Qin Fen who was standing behind him in the temple tells him to wait. Yun Feng halted in his steps and asked what it was again, then she asked him if it ever occurred to him that she might be lying when she said it's about their son. Yun Feng took a few seconds to process her question before he replied her saying the first time he met her he thought she was egoistic and discourteous. While he was giving an answer to her question she held onto the table so tight that it had a crack in it but Yun Feng had other nice things to say about her other than what he had said earlier. He continued saying that but after all their battles together he admires her and sometimes he even thinks of becoming sworn brothers. With her at this point she threw a cup at him saying who cared about being brothers with him and that he should not dawdle and give her a definite answer. He didn't even have any extra thing to say to her other than that they would see in a few days. He leaves and Qin Fen is left at the temple but while flying home his heart starts palpitating he tries to calm it down but nothing works. His mind is trying to fight the stress and just for him to settle so he could fly home safely, but it seems like nothing is working for him and he says he needs to find someone to spar with. Yun Feng flew up into the skin, and after he decided that he was going to look for someone to spar with he flew so fast to the diabolic sect, and he went into the celestial pavilion. Immediately Yun Feng arrived at the entrance of the celestial pavilion and the Garen Serenthi tried to sound the alarm, but he arrived before they could sound the alarm. Once he stopped in front of the guards he said the alarm was already too slow but the guards paid no attention to his words and kept sounding the alarm and yelling that the supreme saint was there. The guards finally sound the alarm and a girl comes flying towards Yun Feng and touches him in the chest. When she touched his chest he said that there was finally progress, that there were not that many cultivators in the world who attains the rank of Jinchen and can strike at me twice successfully except for the paw person standing in front of him. She asked him why he came there and started bullying people for no reason. He then explained to her that he only came there to fight because he was upset and the lady said it was fine that they could fight. They started fighting and the fight lasted for some time, while the people who were on the ground watching as they were fighting were wondering if he was there to destroy them. After their fight and Yun Feng was satisfied they both stopped fighting and went down to drink some cans of beer and chat for a while. While the lady was drinking beer some beer spilled all over her body and her face she then wiped her face with the back of her palm. She then told Yun Feng that if he was ever having trouble, he could come to her to vent his frustration as a sparring partner. Yun Feng and the lady had a long conversation and it seemed like they were enjoying one another company. Shigrin began to pester Yun Feng to tell her about what made him so mad that he wanted to fight so badly and Yun Feng tells her that he suddenly has a son, and the mother was Qin Feng Su. Immediately Shigrin heard what Yun Feng had just said she asked that out the liquid in her mouth onto Yun Feng's face. This action seems to be common amongst these people. Immediately the did fish started apologizing because she covered her mouth a little in a funny way. Yun Feng got up and started to explain what happened in a very defensive way. He kept yelling and using hand gestures to explain what had happened between them just as he was explaining a little girl came out of nowhere yelling. Yun Feng stopped in his sentence and watched as the girl who didn't look so like walked up to him. She was dressed in a black dress with black shoes on her leg and she also had a short black hair on her head. When she got to the front of Yun Feng she started hitting him several times as she was also shouting at him and calling him a bastard, 
but he didn't even budge instead he kept poking her head with his finger in a mocking manner. Yun Feng wonders how the lady has a child in the diabolic sect where blood ties are unwelcomed. Just as he was asking Chagrin how it was possible she had a child the little girl stabs him with a fire fairy thorn but it was stopped by an invisible shield covering Yun Feng's body. He lifts her up and collects the fire fairy from her saying she would hurt herself with it if she wasn't careful. But thorns come out of the fairy fire thorns handle piercing his hands. Yun Feng shouts at her angrily but she throws a round pill in his mouth which Yun Feng thinks is poison and says he's immune to poison. But it's a bitter Wu Wei pill which makes Yun Feng's stomach revolt and the girl runs to her mother's side taunting Yun Feng. Shigrin says that the little girl liked to go scavenge from the elders and she plays with the things that were already discarded by others. Yunfeng is angry with the little girl because she was playing with weapons that weren't to be played with by a child. Yunfeng keeps yelling and screaming at the fact that what the little girl had thrown into his mouth was so bitter. He quickly grabs two cans of beer and drinks the two cans hurriedly to rid the bitter taste in his mouth. After he drinks the beer he then asks who the father of the girl was so he can teach him a lesson for not teaching the girl manners. He then continues to drink his beer. Shigrin responds to him saying he was the father of the little girl. This makes Yunfeng spit his bear in her face then Shigrin pats her daughter's head and uses magic to transport the girl away and says she will explain how the daughter came to pass. Yunfeng thinks he's intoxicated because he had already began to see pink elephants. Shigrin tells him to drink a little more drink so that he could sober up and then he drinks dozens bottles of beers to sober up. When he was done with the last bottle of beer he then asks who the father of the child is again and the lady replies him saying that he was the father of the child. Yunfeng was so furious and he started yelling at her again but she remained calm and listened to all he had to say. Then he explains since unlike Karen he doesn't remember doing anything with her. The lady says truly he can't remember and explains to him that 10 years ago when he just attained godhood and butchering many of the masters of the diabolic sect like. An alliance was formed and he was captured and almost killed in the infernal prison. He didn't quite agree with what she had to say about the whole event, she stood up and pointed at him telling him that he was the son of luck and he would surely not die. He then tells her that she is the only one in the world who seated to be this cocky with him and she started mourning very close to him just as they were discussing Yunfeng noticed that they were slowly deviating from the main topic at hand, so he cautioned her not to deviate. She then says at the time she was practicing the nether moon heart soul technique. Yunfeng says he knows that the diabolic clan's peculiar technique can combine all known skills of others into their own which is much more fierce and stronger than Northern Imperial technique recorded in the Centurial Ancient Scriptures and because of that technique their sect has produced countless peerless demons. However it is also known as the Omnipotent Panacea because of its ability to convert all kinds of techniques into a catalyst that makes an individual powers to increase. Because of that it was coveted by everyone causing their diabolic sect population to decrease. The lady says she tried to divide her powers evenly so he subdivided it and spread it to the entirety of Huexia Shenzu in one fell swoop because the old dogs who captured him during that time formed an alliance and started to plot against her aggressively. Yunfeng gets angry and he is crushing the can of beer that was in his hand till it turned to a little gem and says he will kill all the old dogs that imprisoned him and because they caused him humiliation. He began to ask Chagrin where they were hiding and that he wanted to know their location so he could beat them up to vent his anger. Chagrin tells him to be calm because he would not be angry if he sees them now since they have repented. Yunfeng turned his head to the side to look at her and he asked her to tell him what it was they were doing. She then said that the demon Saint Kai and Shu who was subdued by him. He then entered seclusion for 10 days. It was said that he was thoroughly enlightened and he now followed the great Tao. She continued telling him that one was in a mental asylum and he says he really can't do it again since he has a conscience. Shigrin kept telling Yunfeng about the stories of the men who subdued him in his early life. Then Yunfeng tells her to stop all the stories and tell her how it happened and the lady says the elders teamed up and gave her the strongest aphrodisiac in the world but she didn't give in and escaped desperately in one piece and with all the aphrodisiac in her veins she can't escape forever so she thought about it that if once cultivation is fated to be abolished then it is up to oneself to decide so she teleported herself to where he was imprisoned. Yunfeng is shaking chagrin vigorously just to prove a point as he asks her why she chose him when they are polar opposites like good and evil, water and fire and she says it's because he's handsome but he doesn't believe her and tells her to tell him the truth because if he was going to use her narrative that meant that. Kai and Shu was also handsome in both good and evil ways and also that he practiced Buddhism. Also with a great temperament. He would slay both men and women. It seems as though she is playing some sort of prank on him. She commends that he is quite self-aware and also that he is deliberate. She begins to tell him the truth and she also informed him about some things that he didn't know about and he says that he's still going to consider her as his brother in his head and this also convinced him to believe what she was saying. After saying all that he had to say to her, he brought out the gem that he forged from the can of veer and held onto her hand. Every action that he did made her have flashbacks of the time he was subdued in a dungeon. 
After holding onto her hand for a while he then forges a ring and gives it to her telling her that they should get married. She takes the ring and says she will accept it because it's beautiful but she rejects his marriage proposal and asks for forgiveness. Yunfeng asks her what she means by that but she says she means it literally. Yunfeng was so furious again and he asked her if she and Karen planned it together for both of them to reject his proposal so simply without giving it any thought. She then asks him why Karen rejected his proposal and he tells her that she's afraid that once the child is known as the child of the supreme saint, he would be isolated by the people around him and the foundation of the world would become unstable. The child will become a hotspot by his enemies who hate him which is not a good thing for him. The lady agrees with Karen's reasons are right and that he still has a lot of battles to fight and having a child will be his downfall. She also listed out the series of battles he had down and foes he had. Yunfeng asks her that since he has a lot of enemies out there, and that there were also a lot of murderous criminals staying in the diabolic sect so would his daughter be actually safe there. The lady tells Yunfeng not to worry because his daughter is called the Little Devil Star of the Celestial Pavilion, and is even feared by the old guards there and that she's already cunning even at such a young age so he shouldn't worry about her future. The lady asks why Yunfeng wasn't bothered about her and he said thinking about the ideals she fought for at the beginning. She then says after having their daughter Linglong it made her also feel very good to change her way of life. Yunfeng grabs onto his chest in a way that shows that he has pain then he says suddenly having a child with two of the most unlikely people in the world is suddenly too much for his heart to handle. The last begins to laugh at him in a form of mockery and she tells him he had better adapt fast because Hu Kexin also gave birth to a daughter for him. Yunfeng shocked by the news screams and flies away. While flying very fast Yunfeng thinks that it's impossible since he only met Hu Kexin once when he was trying to forge a diplomatic alliance with the Kunlun sect in the southwest of the land of Great Yu and his memories at that was perfectly clear. There's nothing in his memory that such unspeakable things happened at that time, nothing at all. Then he wonders if it could be. Twelve years ago, Shenzhou is still in a situation where the five dragons are fighting for the pearl. The great Rekshasa kingdom in the west has the heart to expand and conquer the eastern lands. The first step is to send the fifth prince Bai Yi as an envoy on the pretext of reconciliation between the great Rekshasa king Tai Yong and the nine-tailed demon fox king Hu Kexin. In the southwestern gateway of Shenzhou Huexia mainland, where the kingdom of ten thousand demons lies the great Dayu Kunlun that has become its vassal and Yunfeng is entrusted as the envoy from Shenzhou Huexia mainland to go to Dayu Kunlun alone. On that day he cut off the head of the prince and the world trembles. The king asks Yunfeng why he cut off the fifth prince's head since reputation is very important and as he thought about the reaction of Rekshasa kingdom what if they attack the habitats of her small and large group of demons with their army. Yunfeng tells her the king sent the fifth prince as an envoy because because he does not want to fight but exert his authority and if the envoy is killed the Rakshasa army will not retaliate immediately. The king claps and says he's not only proficient in martial arts but also is unparalleled in terms of wisdom and courage and the king replies him saying that although the Rakshasa army may not attack them now but what if he uses this to intimidate him, forcing him to surrender his turf under him, to be his eyes, to wait and see the changes as chaos ensues in Shenzhou mainland waiting for the right time to start the incursions. Yunfeng tells the king that Rekshasa can't survive a 10-year war but if they send envoys to come again, then he will bring them to their knees. Yunfeng tosses his sword into the fifth prince's head. The king asks Yunfeng if he wants to control people through fear, if so nothing separates him from Rekshasa kingdom. Just as the king was still talking a woman came out from behind the curtain and walked slowly towards him and it looks as if the king is the lady dressed in a gown with a long crown on her head. The king walks up to Yunfeng and tells him the only way they could gain peace is to vassalize, give sanctions, offer truce, also friendship with him and that she offers compensations to the remote area that were caught between two major forces. The king asks him which one he wants and he replied that he wanted friendship with them and the king bursts out laughing heart gently. Yunfeng looked at her like she had grown a new head on her shoulder and he asked her why she was laughing, and also what was funny. She told him to wait because she didn't know how to react and that she needed to calm down before. She spoke to him after a few moments of her laughing she finally gained composure and she placed her hand on the sword that stood between them and she spoke to him. She explained to him that she didn't expect him to say that and tells him to stay and give her some guidance. She then uses some sort of magic on him. Yunfeng realizes he doesn't remember what happened after that all he remembers is going home the next day and says although reasoning, predicting and contemplating are not his strong suits he still excels at what he does, and says he will make the sly fox tell him the truth, flew off very fast and he is distraught that he completely forgot the purpose of the trip. At Deguko Main Hall, the remarkable emissary of the Great Rexasha Kingdom had arrived. Yunfeng stayed in a corner of the hall and watched the activities from afar that was when he realized that they were having discussions for foreign affairs that day. 
Yun Feng still stands at a corner and he is asking himself if he should be mad and go in front of the evil fox demon and point at her nose and ask her why he should conceal himself. He kept pacing back and forth asking himself what he should say to her immediately he got to where she was just as he was pacing around. Someone called out to him calling him father and asks him what he's doing there and he says he has come to stir up trouble for the evil demoness who kecks him. The girl asks him why he's being rude to her mother, he kept answering to the voice that was speaking to him but he wasn't paying full attention to what was going on. It later occurred to him that he had been speaking to someone who he didn't see their face and they were calling him daddy. He then turns around asking who it was that kept hiding behind and calling him daddy. A little girl walked out of the back holding a doll in her hand and she responds to him that it was she. Once again he keeps answering without paying attention but this time when he realizes that the child was calling him father he started to sweat profusely and his heart started beating so fast. He then screams out loud asking himself if he was the one that was being called father this action makes the guards think a foreign enemy was attacking its side hall. Yunfeng knowing waging war with an allied kingdom is forbidden uses so instead he used his power to do a reversal of heaven and earth. Lin Yunfeng is one of the top 10 that cultivated it after reaching the peak. It can backtrack time to the state it was 30 seconds ago. This cultivation technique has delivered defeat to countless strong opponents. And now he uses in this kind of situation. When the reversal took place it took him back to 30 seconds before he alerted the guards unintentionally. It took them back to when the little girl called him father for the first time. He then told her that she can't just refer to anyone as her father and asks who her parents were. She then tells him her mother is the evil demon as he mentioned and that he was her father. He asks her if she's sure and screams aloud again making the guards come running towards him again. Knowing he's not allowed to wage war with an allied kingdom he uses the reversal of heaven and earth again. When he concluded with the last reversal of heaven and earth, he starts panting so hard that he falls to the ground and holds onto his chest. He says it's too sudden and almost messed up his Tao heart and wonders what he should do since he hasn't quarreled with a child before. Yun Feng stood up from the ground feeling awkward because he didn't know how to approach the little girl in front of him who just called him father, still sweating he asks the girl if her mother really told her he was her father. The little girl responded that her mother did tell her that and she told him happily that he had finally come to see her, and that it has been 12 years since she was born and that since she was young, she has been waiting for him on the top of the great hall gazing at the stars and the moon. She raised up her doll and showed it to him. She continued by telling him that she saw a shooting star the day before and made a wish that her father would come down from the sky like a hero and save them and now it looked like her wish had unexpectedly come true. Yun Feng realizes she was telling the truth and it looked like a tear was about to fall out his eye. Faced with the innocence displayed by the child who longed for her father, Yun Feng feels the extreme guilt and blames himself. Yun Feng apologizes to the girl for coming so late and asks her to hug him but she tells him to save her and her mother instead of going in for the hug. He looked at her with shock on his face because he didn't understand what she was saying. He then asked her what was wrong. She tells him that Rekshasa Kingdom asked her mother for tribute and not too long ago issued a document to her regarding her betrothment, and they want her to marry their third prince. Yun Feng gets angry that the Rakshasa Kingdom would be so black-hearted and that after many years he still proposed such a thing. He was also so furious that they would ask for his daughter hand in marriage and tells his daughter to come along with him. She looked up to him and asked him what it was that he wanted to do and he responded that he was willing to stand up for her, and that he would teach the vicious Raksasha dogs an unforgettable lesson. His daughter runs to hug him so heartfelt, she also said that he was surely a very reliable father. He isn't used to the fact that I child could praise him so just as she hugged him and the corner of his mouth started grinning uncontrollably after being praised by her. He lifted her up and told her to hold on to him so tightly and she agreed. He carried her and they fly away. At the Great Hall someone is speaking to Hu Keksen saying that a day had passed and if she has made arrangements for the marriage of the Rakshasa's prince and her daughter the princess of Dayu. The king replies them saying her daughter is still too young to marry and that they should wait for the right time. The envoy tells her they won't get married immediately but she will come and live in the Rakshasa kingdom and receive her education while getting close to the prince and they can have a grand wedding after. The king says she will be sad if her only daughter is far away from her. The envoy says the king also considered that and has sent a teacher along to teach her but the king says they're competent people in her kingdom also so there's the need. The envoy asks if she's sure and tells her he's the first disciple of the great Rekshasa state master known as the Dark Master who governs life and death Saint Anut Jelen the Death Reaper. The teacher says that the Dark Master has never accepted a disciple before but because the princess is talented she can inherit his mantle. The envoy tells the king their Rekshasa's kingdom is so sincere to her majesty and asks if she will refuse their king's great kindness. The queen says that acknowledging a teacher is a big deal and that she would have to think about it just as she finished with her statement a voice from behind yells 
Wells that there was no need for her to think about anything because she already had a teacher. They all turned to the direction of the voice and Yun Feng was coming and holding the little girl to his side. The queen stood up from her seat and said to Yun Feng that who was she to tell him? Shrugging off conformities. Without prior notice known, intruding into the halls of my great kingdom as she was talking she kept walking towards Yun Feng and her daughter. Once she got to where they were both standing she did a little bow and said that she had seen the supreme saint and that why did they not inform her that they were coming? Immediately the two other people had that the person that just came in was the supreme saint they were shocked. The envoy faced his master who was standing beside him and started asking him what they had to do now because the rumors had it that the supreme saint conquered all of Shenju Huexia and was practically unmatched. The master said to the envoy that Shenju was still in recovery, then he started thinking that how was it possible he managed all the things but he was suddenly able to accept a student. He also started thinking that it was possibly a trick for him to refuse taking the princess as his student. The envoy agreed with his narrative of what was going on. The queen continued to speak loudly so the other people could head what they were saying and she could also instill some sort of fear in them. After she finished talking Yun Feng looked confused to some extent then the little girl ran to her mother and hugged her. The mother bent down and held her daughter but she asked her she had brought He Fem to the kingdom. Yun Feng walked past them a little and he said something so lowly for only her to hear. Then the queen replied to him saying that the envoys were still doubtful that he was the holiness himself. The dark master turned to face them and started to speak to them he said the supreme saint, the number one individual in Shenzhou. He wanted to accept a student, nevertheless, it was bothersome for himself and the envoy to ignore the fact that it looked like the person who they called the supreme saint was an imposter. He also said that if it was true that there would be great consequences for the imposter. As he finished with his statement he said again that he wanted to test out this person to see if they were really the supreme saint. The little girl was standing beside her mother and she said that the old dog was as cunning as they were because no offense would be done to both the winning and the losing side. Just as the little girl was speaking to her mother the old fog was exuding some sort of green fume and a little black liquid came out from his finger and when it dropped on the floor some sort of circle with triangles and he was standing in. Just as he was in the circle his form changed into a form of a skeleton holding a long staff that looked like a weapon. When this happened the other people were standing and watching him doing it all. Then the queen said that the seance was bringing forth the gods of the world's law the envoy who was with the dark master responded to her and said there were only a handful of great masters in the world who could be recognized by the gods and bestows the power if laws. Also the good of death who governed the law of life and death was also a fearsome existence among the other gods. The mortal means physical. The dark master said to them that it wasn't that baffling and that he also implore this holy venerable to enlighten them. The little girl started shivering after the dark master started to reveal his powders and she complained that it was strange because it became so cold and she was shivering. After she complained Yun Feng placed his hand on her head and did some magic that made her warm and also created like a shield for her. When he created it and he took his hand off her head, he asked her if she felt better and the little girl said that she felt better and she wants cold anymore. The dark master was shocked that he could do something like that, so he launched at him. Yun Feng turned his back to the dark master, his back was turned when the dark master launched at him instead of him retaliating immediately. He began to ask what the so-called seance was and also asked if he had ever heard of the eastern mystic technique called the art of apotheosis. Immediately he said this he began to exhume some sort of bright energy that made the dark master and his envoy shocked. Yun Feng had a very big shadow that shined very bright and very big shadow the incarnation of God. Immediately the supreme saint said those words his shadow began to say that it was God and the dark master and his envoy couldn't believe his eyes. The shadow of the dark master was captured by the shadow of the supreme saint and then he said to them that they should tell their kind that even if the Dayu kingdom was newly formed in Shenzhou, as long as he was there or even nearby they shouldn't think of interfering in any way. At this point the dark master and his envoy were beaten and stripped of their clothes as they were nervously trembling. They answered the supreme saint with so much fear in their hearts. Yun Feng yelled for them to get out and find out how their fifth prince Tai Yong was crippled by him 12 years ago. They were thrown out of the kingdom. They both kept begging that they both be forgiven and taken back but they were already thrown out of the kingdom. The fog around Yun Feng finally created and he was seen in the middle of it. The little girl started to scream happily as she was jumping and yelling she said to her mother that she had finally been tricked and she finally got her. She asked her mother if that supreme saint was truly her father while she was pointing at Yun Feng. The queen who is the little girl's mother went to her and bent down before her and told her that yes indeed she had won. The little girl was so ecstatic that she had finally found her father and he was able to protect her. She kept jumping around and screaming so happily. She also ran to her mother and went to speak to her saying that if her father was handsome then he could only be considered average and that if he had a simple mind. 
then he was more powerful than the ordinary man the little girl was dispensing into her mother's ears when she asked her that how could Queen Mother choose that person. Yunfeng shouted at both of them because he was feeling left out of their conversation. The Queen Mother answered the little girl saying that it's likely that two people came together at the right place and also at the right time and the right people. The little girl's lost but she vaguely understands what her mother just said to her. Yunfeng still felt left out because the both of them were only saying things that they both could understand and not him so he shouted at the saying that they shouldn't pretend like he didn't exist and that what was going on between them. The queen looked up at him with no emotion in her eyes and said that she didn't feel any form of pity for him. She then continued saying that the skirt she was wearing was the only set of skirt made for her from the heavenly silkworm silken thread and that it was shredded by the airflow he used. She told him he had no choice but to accompany her to her bedchambers to change her clothes. He looked so lost at her but before he could agree or disagree she latched onto his arms pulling him towards her chambers. The little girl at the back began to yell for them to wait for her. At the bedchambers, Yunfeng was standing behind her transparent curtain while the queen was taking of her clothing it seemed like he was uncomfortable so when she dropped her clothes he turned away from her direction so now his back was facing her instead of his front. The little girl who was standing behind him asked him why he wasn't looking at her mother and that was she not beautiful enough for him. He was shocked can't see could ask him such a question so immediately he scolded her asking her why she what she was thinking at such a very young age and that what he was doing was called respect. He then continued telling the girl that all the men outside were basically looking at her mother and that meant that she was very charming. He then asked the little girl that what did her mother teach her. The little girl was laying on a bed when she was speaking to Yunfeng saying that her mother always told her to use all her charms to conquer all her enemies. She also said that her mother usually told her to use softness to overpower strength and gag if she wanted to resist she should welcome a carrot and a stick. The mother replied from behind the both of them. She commended her daughter asking if Yunfeng agreed that the little girl was clever. Yunfeng answered with a cough and asked her how she could teach a child the way she did. The queen replied to him saying that the little girl was a child who always leaned fast and that the lions and tigers were quite handsome and the cubs of those who looked like big apes were all becoming submissive, and they followed her lead. Yunfeng yelled at the queen to stop all the nonsense she was going and for her to tell him what was really going on. The little girl replied to him saying that she had searched the foreign affairs directory of the Dayu kingdom and listed all of the possible people from more than 10 years ago. She continued that she scratched out names one by one and there were only a few people among them that could be her father that just as she was making her research Yunfeng came by the gate by himself. Then she went ahead with the flow letting Yunfeng who she called father come to their rescue and at the same time she could use the cliché lines from her mother. When she finished speaking Yunfeng said he now understood what she was doing. She was trying to get qualitative education, edutainment and fun. The queen explained to Yunfeng that as the future heir to the throne she was able to traverse her way through the great powers. This was a vital skill that every ruler must have. It was also through this skill that she would be able to protect herself and the thousands of the citizens under her rule in the future. The little girl and her mother stood facing Yunfeng and Yunfeng was looking at the lostly. He was thinking about what they had been something about and also what the little girl had said to him. Then told the little girl that she shouldn't be a princess but be a happy child. The mother and the little girl looked at him like he had grown new sets of head and the queen replied that the wood wasn't yet at peace and they the royal family must bear the burden first. Yunfeng squeezed his fist in irritation and anger, he said the peace that he yearns for wasn't just for the kingdom but for everyone that experienced tranquility and happiness. He also hoped that his child could live a carefree life. Just as they were talking the little girl was paying attention to what Yunfeng was saying and then she said she hated being a princess because she couldn't even enjoy the good food since she needed to learn etiquette and also information about a nearby kingdom at heart. The queen went towards her bed and sat on it. Age said that Yunfeng had said the same things 12 years ago and people thought it was a joke if a stupid young man but as she was laying on her bed she continued and said that she was actually looking forward to the day that it all came true. Yunfeng kept listening to her but it stroked him that she hadn't answered him when he asked her what she did to him which made him not recall anything that happens that day. The little girl also asked her mother what kind of charm she had used on her father. The queen turned to the little girl and said that she was so proud of her that she knew that it was a charm she used not a spell. Yunfeng was confused further and he asked what they both meant by charm. The queen now explained to him that her kingdom of Dayu Kunlun had been built for hundreds of years not only by deception, but also with strong lineage. She explained that the aim was first friendship and strength, then there was background and power. She told him that most of the targets were incredibly brilliant people unparalleled, sharp-eyed, or have partners in marriages or all sorts of entanglement. The little girl told Yunjifeng that she was a nine-tailed fox inborn with an appealing physique and appearance but that the most powerful part was that it could charm a soul. She continued telling him that those innately born talents could charm all living beings and that it could only be performed once in a lifetime. 
She continued explaining to him that those who got hit by the charm could be manipulated at will. The little girl faced her mother and asked why her mother chose him when 10 years ago he was powerful but there was a gap between himself and the top masters. Yung Feng yelled at her asking why she had chosen him just as his daughter had just asked her. She said it was about that time that she had been captivated by someone's frankness and courage then she laughed a sly laugh. Yung Feng sat on the ground exhausted from all the activities of the day and he said to both of them that both women were both dangerous. The queen stood up confused and asked him what he meant by these women. She the asked him if there were other women other than herself and Yi Huanhuan and she told him to say it to her quickly. The little girl said that she also wanted to hear the story of her father. Yung Feng told her about his story and she listened to it. A moment later, the little girl stood up and yelled that since they wouldn't marry her father then let her mother and himself get married first. They both of them looked at one another then the queen said no she couldn't marry him. The little girl got so sad and asked why they wouldn't marry and the mother explained that marriage between two leaders of two kingdoms involves more than just two people. She explained also that marrying the ruler of a kingdom to her was equivalent to merging the two kingdoms into one kingdom. Yung Feng told the little girl further that the opposing forces in Huexia capital would never allow it, and there would be a risk of triggering a civil war in Dayu Kingdom. Her mother further buttressed the fact that they couldn't be Tojgder, she said that the Supreme Saint couldn't join the Dayu Kingdom, the Shenzhou Huexia capital had just been established. She said the saint was currently the anchor and they couldn't help themselves. The little girl began to cry with her head in her thighs then she said that she had finally found her father but they both still wanted Git to have no father. She welled at both of them that she hated them. The little girl ran out of the room with too much speed Yung Feng kept calling out to her to stop but she just ran out of the room when he was about to go after the girl the queen held onto his arm and shook her head for him to let her go. Yung Feng turned Di around and looked at her asking her why she had stopped him. She then responded saying that what just happened was something that everyone born into the imperial family had to endure. The little girl did she did and so did her mother but fortunately for her she was able to choose the father of her child at will. Yung Feng took himself out of her grip and started walking towards the exit. He then said to her that he would figure it all out by himself. The queen told him that before he leaves that he should stay with her first because knowing that she has a father would make her very happy. He asked her how she knew and she told him that as foxes when they are happy their tails would move on their own which was much more honest than their mouths. He then asked her if she was happy too and she responded that at this point she was happy but just a little. He continued going outside to go and look for the little girl who was his daughter. She was sitting on the roof and looking into the clouds. She had tears in her eyes. When Yung Feng came up to seat beside her she turned her face away from where he sat. And he noticed that her tail was moving on their own which meant that she was happy to see him. He then remembered what the queen had told him about their tails. Yung Feng apologized to the little girl who was still facing the other side because she was sad. The little girl told him that he had nothing to be sorry about. She said she knew adults had a lot of things they couldn't help themselves out of and that she was still a child so it was still normal for her to not understand. Yung Feng said to himself that if the queen hadn't told him about how they foxes behave he wouldn't have known when the little girl was happy. He then patted her head immediately the little girl Saint Ted yelling that she didn't even know him very well and he was patting her head all she knew about him was that he was her biological father. Yung Feng looked at her and asked her what she wanted since it was the first time they were meeting. The little girl's eye became so bright and she got excited. She asked him if he could get her anything that she wanted and he replied that he was going to get her anything that she wanted. The little girl them said she wanted a star as she pointed at the sky. Yung Feng said he was going to get her one and he tapped her head with his magic and they both began to fly into the air towards the sky. The little girl was so happy that she was flying and she kept squealing that she could now fly and she was flying. Yung Feng and the little girl were in the sky when she kept shouting for him to take them higher and higher. So he agreed and took her higher and closer to the full moon. The little girl was so excited she said it was her first time seeing the star and the moon so close. Yung Feng told her to observe closely that he was going to pluck a star for her. She looked at him shocked that he wanted to pluck out a star. He then began to chant he said the mouth that can swallow the sun and moon, the hand that can pluck the stars above. The astral shift, the direct translation was the shifting star, star light. The direct translation was star come. The little girl stood beside him shocked at what was going on. She was so impressed when she saw a star coming close. Meanwhile, in a different place, they were yelling that it was over because the star had finally fallen. The queen mother said to herself that the supreme saint was still the same and he still likes to make a ruckus. The star was coming in on them and it looked so hot and big. The little girl started screaming that it was coming and that someone should help them but Yung Feng told her not to be scared because he was there and he told her to look at him. 
He went up and placed his hand on the very big flame coming towards them and he said it should turn into a seed. Immediately the very big flame turned into a shining little seed and the girl wasn't afraid no more. Yin Feng went up to the little girl and showed her the star and she was so happy. She even said it looked so shining and beautiful. Yun Feng was so happy that she liked it and he said he got it for her just as she liked it. The little girl yelled at him saying that it had been so long since he visited and she had been bullied a lot. Immediately he apologized to the little girl for his absence. He toned Elder her that in the future if anyone dared to cause any trouble for her that all she needed to do was for her to contact him through the seed star and even if he was miles away he would find his way to Dun right away. She asked him if it wasn't for diplomatic affairs. Yun Feng replied to her saying that her father was really amazing and he would do as he says. Someone was seated at the other side of the four and he said to Yun Feng that he usually just push open the door and come in but he didn't do so. What could have been the problem? Yung Feng looked at the person confused as the person continued telling him to come into the room and take a bite of the food he was eating. He went in and went to seat in front of him and took a bite of the food the man was eating. Yung Feng said that the person was the only person he knew that would cook hot pot using the Senlu chessboard as a stove. The guy said he had used up all of his calculations in the name of uniting God's land, and as a result, his power had degraded to the human realm rank. He also said that to him the use of the chessboard was now no more than to serve his wine for cooking and play on it for fun. He continued explaining that once immemorial time strategists have been working for their own ideals and with the brilliant power of their minds they were able to change the fate of the world. They also have the ability to make a decisive conclusion. But there was a guy who raised his calculations from the measly human realm rank up to the apex level and his calculation level was now on the apex. Heavenly realm rank. Man calculates the yin, God calculates the yang. But in front of the heavenly reckoning that can calculate all the possibilities in the future, all the schemes and conspiracies in the face of limitless calculating power, resistance is futile. But after releasing the divine calculation, it used up all of his life power. His calculation power regressed from the heavenly realm to the human rank. He also said that the god's land had been settled but there were still things for them to do. He said his divine calculations ends at this moment and after that it depends on the supreme saint and the brothers to maintain it. He also said he had found a thatched but he can visit and talk to him if he didn't have anything to do. Yun Feng stood and thought about all he had said to him. When they got back to where they were before the man asked him what it was he wanted from him, he then asked him if he had any friend who was in trouble lately. Yun Feng banged the table and started yelling at him that yes he did. The man asked him again if that friend was in love and he suddenly had a child. Yun Feng yelled again and said that he was correct. He asked him yield new and asked him if his powers had returned to the heaven realm rank. The man said no but that he should tell him about this friend of his. Yung Feng started thinking of how he was going to start the story and how he was going to talk about a friend when in the real sense it was himself that he wanted to talk about. He began by saying that his friend had been busy with work and had never had any contact with the opposite sex however he suddenly found out that he had children with some most unlikely women and he had absolutely no idea on what to do. Yung Feng he picked up his tea aggressively and drank the contact if it. He then continued by saying that his friend asked him to discuss it with him. The man said the story looked like a TV series in the magical realm genre and that he should continue. Yung Feng started saying that he didn't understand what was going on and therefore he couldn't help him. Yung Feng said since people always came to ask him they put their trust on him so he had to help them or something, so he had come to him for help and to ask for advice. The man finally put down his chopsticks and spoke to Yung Feng. He said to him that he was actually a warm-hearted person and that it wasn't that the world had been completely destroyed or the loss of countless lives, but it was anxious about people's problems. Yung Feng ran to him and held out to his shirt saying that it was his brother's and that if it was him and his people too he would be anxious too. The man said yes he knew his old ways and he knew it very well. He told him to let him go because his frail body was too small for the action. Yung Feng let go of the man and he said to him that he should five him the advice so he could go back and tell his friend. The man said he had to think about it before he said anything to him. The man started laughing so hard unexpectedly. He laughed and laughed, in between his laughter he told Yung Feng that he couldn't pretend to him anymore. Yung Feng wasn't having it so he started to yell at him and was asking him what sort of a joke he was playing with him. The man began to speak that Yung Feng knows that 15 years ago he did the only time in his life that he could cast the ancient numeracy technique which was the art of heavenly reckoning. Yung Feng asked him what he brought up that memory at that point. The man said to him that he had told him before that the art of heavenly reckoning was divine and it could calculate the possible outcomes and even the conspiracies by a human was also within the divine technique of heavenly reckoning. Yung Feng agreed with what the man was saying. The man continued that as a matter of fact the only person who experienced it knew the divine secrets. B said that what appeared in his mind was not usual like the nine palaces. Four coils, sixteen trigrams, zodiacs, numbers and symbols. A real-time imagery of events, seeing all the possible outcomes from the beginning. 
failures near failed and every possible outcome to success. Yun Feng asked him what he meant by various, the man said to him that yes he meant that a variety of outcomes and that there were also where he unified the world and him and Yun Feng in five years would die, trying to save him. The man continued to say that there were also the ending of being ruled by a thousand hand demons and then by using forces to destroy all the inhabitants, following by the destruction of God's land. Yung Feng said this is so unusually odd, and now this, the man replied to him saying that the strange encounters, the matter between him and Qin Feng Su, Yi Yuanhuan, and Hu Kengxin and it was from the result of choosing a certain future's starting point after the beginning of the calculation. Yung Feng started yelling at him and was asking if that was really amazing. He then told him that he knew all along then the man time him that not only did he know but he possibly knew more than Yung Feng thought. Yung Feng was so furious that he began to yell at him and he kept asking him why he didn't tell him earlier and why he waited for him to embarrass himself. While Yung Feng was holding onto his shirt in anger the man time him to be gentle with him because his little body couldn't take his aggression. Yung Feng released him from his grip and asked him why it felt like he was the most powerful person in the world and nothing could get past through your five fingers. The man told Yung Feng that it wasn't the way he thought it was, the man told him that he was the most powerful person amongst them. He told him that he simply made a choice and that everything else in his own life were based on his strong beliefs and that was what brought him this outcome. Yung Feng asked the man why he didn't choose to untie the world and perhaps the world would have been a better place because of a talent like his. The man poured himself a drink and continued saying that because of that the ending of that no matter how he did the math, it would not still be as good as what they were doing today. Having wine, waiting hot pot and chatting about daily life. He used his powers to pass the wine to Yung Feng and he collected it from the man. They clicked their cups together and drank the wine. Yun Feng said that now that he knew everything what should he do next since he knew it all. The man told him that if he could recall his past and present that he was afraid that his head would have exploded a long time ago. He also said that his calculating power was only as accurate as it is right now. Yun Feng replied to him that even if he wasn't able to do it he must have the right amount of knowledge to help him with his issues. The man said he could only contribute a little if the army needs aid in forming its line attack. Now the issues with him was that he only focused on battlefields and doesn't have time to fall in love not to mention having children. At this point Yung Feng was already tired of the back and forth of the man. The man left his seat and sat close to him. He then placed a hand on his neck and said that there were many many dangerous wars they had encountered before. He then asked Yung Feng how he was able to resolve them all. Yung Feng said that he basically just fights all the battles head on and he breaks through all the obstructions. The man agreed with his method for facing issues and he told him that he should take this present issue as a battle and also face it head on. Yung Feng thought about what the man had just told him to do and he asked if the present situation wasn't different from the battles. The man responded to him that there was no difference with this situation. He then said that whatever made the Supreme Saint afraid if it came he should just let it be because he was safe. Yung Feng didn't feel like the man said the right thing when he said he was safe. Yung Feng questioned it and asked him he he really felt that way about him. The man then told him that he was seriously quite enviable. He said that Qin Feng Su, Yi Yuan Huan, and Hu Xu and Xuan were maverick beauties with peerless looks who both had children with him. He now exclaimed that want life starting to get a little bit interesting. Yung Feng left the man's place and when he got into the sky he waved down at him to bid him farewell. The man smiled so heartfelt at him as he waved at him. He then said that only when one was mentally prepared then one can calmly face more of life's surprises. While Yung Feng was flying out of the kingdom he started speaking to himself and he told himself that he was still safe and he really had nothing to be sacred of. Then he stopped in the air to meditate mid-air. He sat in a cross-legged position and started to meditate. Just as he was meditating he commended the work of the heaven's gentle imperial wind and this time his nerves calmed down. He then started questioning himself that since this present issue felt like he had such battles from before but now he didn't know how to handle it or what to sow next. He then stopped and closed his eyes so he could think of what he could do. Just as he was meditating he realized that he knew the solution all along he yelled aphrodisiac power. He said that after this he would take his little daughter and her mother to visit the kingdom of Dai again immediately Yung Feng found something that could do then I began becoming affectionate. When Yung Feng got down from the sky he was speaking to someone and the person was telling him to tell him all that happened because he knew he loved to hear secrets so much and that the earth hearing court had finished setting things up. Yung Feng told him to listen to him now and that he should deploy the courts and he must find the source of the world's number one love potion. Namely the blazing scattered sun, the disciple was shocked and he repeated the name of the item he was asked to go look for. The disciple asked him when such a thing perked his interest and that he shouldn't say that he was going to just before he could finish his sentence Yung Feng threw a stone at his mouth for his to shut his mouth up. Yung Feng said that how dare he make a dare about his master, he sounded him for taking his words as a joke. The disciple had grown a swollen head because of the hit and he started to apologize to his master. Yung Feng immediately told him to go and investigate and find the source of the aphrodisiac powder, 
and this courage thing, he told him that the things needed to be sealed. The disciple got up from the ground and told him that the earth hearing court had always known the source of the medicine, but that he was afraid it would be a little too difficult for him to carry out the investigation. Yunfeng said that when the world was in Chathar the world's mess had all been cleared up and there was no need for such things to exist otherwise he didn't know how many people would be harmed again. The disciple walked up to him and whispered in his ears that he had just gotten the logistics from the Yi family. Yunfeng kept repeating the Yi family and he finally asked who were the Yi family. The disciple replied that his old acquaintance, his benefactors, the one who showed him hospitality in taking him in. Yi Tingyu who was known for being the world's number one merchant saint. The Yi family was the number one in the world of business. Yunfeng couldn't believe his ears because with her kind of personality, how could she be involved in something like that? The information about the Earth's hearing court was not based on baseless facts but after a repeated confirmation of the information. After the disciple explained these things to him he now asked Yunfeng what he planned to do now. Yunfeng told him to stand down and that he would make the proper arrangements for it to be done. The disciple flew away leaning only Yunfeng to his thoughts. He kept thinking that Yin Tingyu was the head of the world's number one merchant company. She was another close friend of his. It seemed like Yunfeng had to go himself to Jinling. His relationship with her in both public and private solving the dilemma of his quietly was the most safest way he could think of. Yunfeng took off again into the sky and went straight for Jingling City, commerce and trade capital in the nine states and the four seas. He looked like some people were standing at the edge of the town walls. Yunfeng flew straight to the Yi family HQ. When he got to the place he used his powers to do a sweep of the whole place to know what he was doing. The buildings had six floors with semicircular barriers, and the building is divided into five equal parts with each floor having a huge Kai force field while under the ground there was a large array of runes, spells and information about the topic killing an immortal. There were also five grandmasters in the building looking at the Kai aura radiating out, it should have been at the rank of the top 20 masters in the world. The materials that were needed to maintain these barriers were not that even if they cost a thousand dollars a day. The top 20 masters were all hard to find people and they were indeed in the hands of the Yi family, the world's number one largest business company. Yunfeng kept thinking to himself that Yi Tingyu didn't like to eat soft or hard food. She didn't even eat oily and salt seasoned foods. The aim of his visit was a private matter it would be unbecoming of him to come there using the official status of being the supreme saint and propose to interfere with the extensive underground industry. He knew if he did this he would be a living laughing stock if a word if it got out. Immediately he passed the first thought then he realized that he was owing her a great debt if gratitude and he couldn't use force like the Rakshasha envoy used in big countries. This thought was another pass, he said to himself that it was better if he went in alone and dealt with the ordeal in a low-key manner that way she will never lose his face. Yunfeng stood outside trying to survey the whole surrounding before he went into plain sight. He saw that at the entrance people were being checked in before they could go into the building. Yunfeng assumed that this was the nearest verification technology. He came to the conclusion that the generic data from an individual was sealed on the card and verified through the heavenly sight. He said even the most unexpected disguise techniques could always change the appearance and even the skeletal structure, but it was also impossible to replicate an individual's genetically information. It was an almost perfect identification system. Yunfeng said to himself that in the whole of the world that there were only a few people who could get into that system without fail, and as the supreme saint he was one of them. Thinking back on those old days when the time where he worked as a spy and an infiltration. He was able to do a lot during that period and he got his on so many things but at this particular time his hand was already itching him. Just as Yunfeng was standing where he was a lady was passing in front of where he hid and as she was going he grabbed Git by magic and put her to sleep but as he was dropping her on the floor he was apologizing to her sleeping form that he was really sorry for what he did but he really needed to borrow had an identity for a moment. Yunfeng he took off her card and he started to use the art if the myriad of emergent visage. He used the form if art to replicate all of the genetic information of a person. The techniques was secret and could only be used like the supreme said Ling Yunfeng. Just as he had cloned her vital and he now looked like her, he said that there was some endocrine disorders weak spleen and a cum stomach. Yunfeng said that since he had used her identity without her permission he healed her of the minor disorder that she had now. Before Yunfeng left where he played the lady on the floor he created a barrier that would prevent anyone from seeing what was on the other side and the young lady could be safe. Yunfeng got into line and was waiting for the bouncer to ask him and check him in. The bouncer collect his identity card and he entered forward to kin the last. The bouncer told him that the entrance test was over and that he could go on. He said to himself that the test was very trivial and the first level was easily passed. Yunfeng walked into the building and saw that it had a very big and long hall that had people inside as well. Yunfeng saw one of the monks who got addicted to his power. He said practicing the immortal golden arhat golden body method maniacally, the person went off the rail and was unable to control his lust and the works outcast him. 
Obviously, he was just a stupid and simple monk. However, he gained the Vajra King's aura, an unrivaled skill in the world. It was immovable like the mountains passively incited to all laws and forces. Yunfeng said that he couldn't put him to rest but only subdue him and later become a good brother of his. He thought that he wouldn't be seeing the monk anytime soon but now he was guarding the toilet door. Yunfeng said the monk was a nervous wreck and that he was a nervous guy so his pass to what was in the other side should be easy for him. He went towards the people who wanted to get on the elevator. Just as he was about to enter the elevator with the others, the monk stopped him in his tracks. Yunfeng was shocked that maybe he recognized him and stopped him. The monk got up and approached him. Yunfeng thought that the disguise had already worn out but when the monk go to where he was he asked him where he had been and that he waited over the night for him to come but he did not. The monk then said to Yunfeng who was in the form of a woman that he had prepared an elaborate date for her. Yunfeng began to speak to himself underneath the form of the woman. He was asking if the monk had a relationship with the lady that he took her form. The girl's soul-stirring figure prods at the monk's unquenchable thirst. And coupled with her contrasting charisma, she became the apple of everyone's eye. The monk popped out his lips and tried to kiss the girl and was asking how she was going to make amends for his betrayed feelings. Yunfeng started yelling for him to let her go but the monk kept saying that if she didn't tell him the reason he wasn't going to let her go anywhere even if she yelled on top of her lungs. Yunfeng thought to himself that he knew exactly how to handle situations like that this. He raised his head and slapped the monk across the face and started to yell at the monk saying that what was the reason he asked her and he should also think about it himself. The monk began to beg and he kept saying that he was going to ponder on his mistake. Yung Feng yelled at him saying that the monk didn't think it out clearly that he should get away from him and he had work to do. Yung Feng walked out on him and he went into the elevator to get to where he was going to initially. When he got into the elevator he heaved a breath that he was holding in. The elevator finally arrived at the 20th floor. Every 20th floor the elevator would change. To deter spies from reaching the top floor, Yung Feng said it was a very thought out plan from the Yi family. He looked around for the gatekeeper of this particular floor and he say that it was the holy safe, Wu Sheng. The old man is exceptionally gifted and has an eidetic memory, and he was the eastern family's key strategist but was thwarted by Wen Yunfeng's art of heavenly reckoning. After the great fall of the eastern family, T the old man also lost his job. The old man told him to walk towards him and he asked him about his identity, so Yun Feng called out the Nadawart girls that he took, but the man said he was asking for his real identity. Yun Feng asked him if he was joking that he just went up for office work. The old man told him that a total of 23 16 people worked in the building and he had known all their names gender, position, and daily schedule, and also fixed tasks. The old man began to say the schedule of the lady whose form he took and he told him that the young lady had no business interacting with the business areas above the 20th floor. Yun Feng told the man that it was a short notice from her superior that morning. The man asked her what the name of her supervisor was. Yun Feng didn't have this information at hand and he began to ask himself what he had to do because he couldn't possibly trick the man. And that's how the first part of this man wins. Well guys, if you like this video and you want a second part, comment below with the word part 2 also subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell and like the video. But most important, leave a comment. Until the next video.